Hello, and welcome all. I'm Brad Reiner. I'm the interim chair of the Department of English, and I'm delighted to be here today to celebrate our graduates and to additionally honor award recipients. Whether you're graduating today with a BA, MA, MFA, or PhD, you wouldn't be here without significant hard work and dedication. And now is a time to mark that work and to celebrate where it's taking you. So first, congratulations to all of you. I'd like to welcome our guest speaker, Aviva Dove Vibon, to say a few words to our graduates. Aviva Dove Vibon is an assistant professor of film and media studies in the Department of English and a contributing editor of Ms. Magazine. She has also co-written a screenplay with Brittany K. Fonte in development with Women of Color Unite and has another feature screenplay in production. She's currently co-editing a collection of essays with Carrie Baker titled Public Fem Feminisms from Academia to Community and working on a book project interrogating gendered representations of power and knowledge on television. Welcome, Aviva. Thank you so much, Brad, for the introduction um, and a double dose of gratitude to all of my colleagues in the English department and the parents, family, and friends who are here today to support your graduates. This is a remarkable time for all of us, particularly for our students who have grappled with an extraordinary and in many ways still unimaginable year and a half in which the world as we know it keeps shifting under our feet. To the students, congratulations, you did it, you made it. This spring and summer, we have 126 masters and PhD students and 278 undergrads graduating across the department's six areas, literature, creative writing, linguistics, writing rhetorics and literacies, secondary education and film and media studies, as well as the online English BA and English's graduate programs, both online and on ground. Graduates. Whatever came before this moment has undoubtedly shaped who you are, but now you get to decide where you'll go next. To prepare for this address, I tried to recall what advice I wanted to hear when I was a graduate myself. This led to the surprising realization that my own college graduation was 20 years ago this month, which combined with one of my own students' comments that nostalgia for the early aughts was in right now, made me want to turn off my camera and mute my mic and pretend I had a bad Wi-Fi connection. So, overwhelmed with the inexorable march of time, I went back to one of my favorite poems from my childhood a poem that's grown in meaning for me in each subsequent decade. It's the first in a series of poems, all about a little box. So here is The Little Box by the Serbian poet Vasco Popa. The little box gets her first teeth and her little length, little width, little emptiness, and all the rest she has. The little box continues growing. The cupboard that she was inside is now inside her. And she grows bigger, bigger, bigger. Now the room is inside her and the house and the city and the earth and the world she was in before. The little box remembers her childhood and by a great, great longing, she becomes a little box again. Now in the little box, you have the whole world in miniature. You can easily put it in a pocket, easily steal it, easily lose it. Take care of the little box. As a child, I thought this poem was cute. I liked the idea of a little box who grew up and engulfed everything around her, consumed the house and the world, and then boxed herself back up again so everything could live with her forever. As an adolescent, I imagined in the little box a rebellion. She grows restlessly and assiduously, then revolts when she becomes too much for herself, reverting to an unassuming trinket small enough for a shelf, unnoticed but teeming with life and knowledge. As an adult, I wonder about the you in the poem. The little box contains the world, so who is left to claim her? 
Who would have the audacity to put her in their pocket? Who would be careless enough to lose a world in miniature? Think about it. We'll come back to this question at the end. It would be easy to draw an illusion here to us all being inside little boxes right now and be done with it. After all, we've spent over a year inside Zoom frames. We've grown accustomed to seeing each other over the disconcerting chasm of near far computer space, both a saving grace for staying in touch and a drain on our eyes and hearts. But this won't be forever. So instead, let's imagine the future when we can emerge from behind our screens and have to contend with a world that is both fundamentally the same and monumentally transformed. As Brad said, I teach film and media studies. So I study the way media reflects who we are socially and culturally, how characters are situated in their imagined environments, how lighting and decor and sound help frame and engender meaning. I am lucky to also be a writer, scholarly, of course, but also for the popular press and the screen. So I'm going to give you some advice as these sorts of talks call for, but I'm going to do it in episodic format. Forewarning, this is an anthology series, so we'll be skipping around in genre. I'll be the voiceover. You can take your position as the plucky young protagonist poised to embark on their next great adventure. Episode one. Don't be afraid of opportunity. Fade in on a small apartment in the heart of a college town. It's a little crowded, a little cluttered, but it's well lit, which really makes all the difference. You sit at a desk reading through a list of job ads. You have a plan all worked out and know exactly what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Or so you've been telling people. Actually, you're anxious because you have no idea where to go from here. Frustrated, you try to throw a crumpled ball of paper into the trash can, miss, lose your balance, topple over in your chair, and end up in a heap on the ground. Don't worry, though. It's a sitcom. You're fine. As you dust yourself off and begin to stand, you tangle your foot in the cord of your laptop. It slides towards the edge of the desk, but you catch it at the last moment. In the resulting scramble to save your treasured computer, you click on a link you'd skimmed past before. A new browser window opens and something unexpected catches your eye. An op opportunity you weren't even looking for that isn't anything you'd ever imagined you'd try. You hesitate for a moment, then decide, why not? If it doesn't work out, it was, wasn't ever something you expected to cross your desk anyway. You send an email asking for more information. Flash forward a week or three months, or a year later, that opportunity you thought was outside your wheelhouse or that you figured you were underqualified for actually turned out to be fulfilling and wonderful. Maybe it led you on a path toward a great story, towards a great career, or at least it will result in a few hilarious hijinks that will give you a chuckle when you tell this story to your grandchildren. The takeaway, Almost every exciting thing that's happened to me professionally has happened because I decided to try something I wasn't sure about, but where I figured it couldn't hurt to toss my hat in the ring. So don't be afraid of opportunity that presents itself. If you have the resources and the time to try, do, even if it wasn't exactly what you had planned. Episode two, just start writing, fade in. A dark and stormy night in a ramshackle cabin by a lake that you have no business being alone in at 1 a.m. It's winter. The roads are closed on account of the blizzard and the lake is frozen over, but you can tell from the look of it that the ice is very thin and deep, deathly cold water lies below. Also, the cabin is haunted. Everyone says so. You rented the cabin on Airbnb so you could work on your novel, but the fireplace that keeps going out on its own, the moaning walls and the bleeding stovetop are decidedly distracting. The doorknob starts rattling, seemingly of its own accord. You call out, no one answers. You spend a sleepless night staring at the door, which now seems to be faintly glowing. You make it to morning, bleary-eyed and terrified. Outside, the day seems bright and cheery. The roads have thawed. There are two options. You could stay and do a little more research. After all, you survived the first night and there might be a secret to the glowing door worth uncovering. Or you could head home and work on your novel in the safety of your local coffee shop, surrounded by people who are corporeal and alive. 
it takes you three minutes to pack and you're on the road in five. Sometimes it's better to work with what you have than risk losing what could be. The takeaway, the best professional advice I ever received was to start writing, even if you aren't feel you aren't ready or you want to stay behind and wait and gather more information. You can extrapolate this advice for other aspects of life as well if you're not a writer. Research and preparation are exceedingly important, but there's a point at which you're better off doing rather than planning, a point at which you just need to get started. Episode three. You can eat an elephant if it takes small bites. If you, if you take small bites, based on a true story. Fade in. You move to a new city for graduate school. And because you don't have any friends yet, you also join a karate dojo for exercise and to meet people and to do something that's not so cerebral all the time. On the first night, you try to throw a punch and sprain your wrist and you feel ridiculous. Your instructor asks what you do for a living and you tell him about your dissertation and how it's going to take you years to finish, how it all feels so daunting. You'll get there, he says. After all, you can eat an elephant if you take small bites. You laugh, it seems silly that first night. Cue the sports montage. A series of vignettes show you intermittently sitting in your grad classes by day and learning how to properly throw a punch at night. You start earning higher belt ranks and start actually writing your dissertation. Both things take years, but you get better and further a punch and a page at a time. You get your black belt, but don't start, stop training. Every week, your instructor asks how your elephant is coming along, even as you begin to teach alongside him. Fine, fine, you answer, until one day you realize, actually, you say, I finished it. The takeaway. It may seem cliche, but breaking down a seemingly insurmountable task into small chunks will make the large task more manageable. The key is not looking at the elephant, but instead at whatever you have to accomplish next, that day or that hour. You've done it already, managed to work your way through two or four or five or more years here at ASU, taken on an enormous undertaking one day at a time. And last, episode four, be flexible. Fade in to a global pandemic. One day, it was Tuesday. The next day, you and everyone you know has forgotten what month it is or the last time you wore real pants. You stockpile toiletries and canned goods, sneaking out of your apartment at odd hours so you can avoid large groups of people at the grocery store. You have your ears perked to the radio and your eyes on your Twitter feed at all hours of the day and night. You take to dressing like the big Lebowski in private and a masked bandit in public. Everyone starts talking about a new normal as if that's remotely comforting. At first, when they announce you won't be going back to campus for the remainder of your penultimate year of college, you panic. Learning online is difficult and frustrating. You miss your friends and even your professors. Some of your professors are decidedly better at navigating Zoom than others, which is its own adventure. As months turn into a year and your own graduation grows nearer, you realize that even though this has been nothing like you ever expected, you are more flexible, capable, and adaptable than you ever realized. You made it to graduation despite the challenges, perhaps even flourished. You have come out the other end of this journey with a degree that you fought for and earned. You prevailed and you are forever changed. One last takeaway. I don't need to tell the class of 2021 that life is unpredictable. You've seen it, you've lived it. You also now have valuable firsthand experience with how to be flexible, how to adapt to unusual circumstances and map uncharted terrain. I could just leave it here. I wouldn't be the first showrunner to introduce an enigmatic metaphor in season one and then never satisfactorily resolve that narrative arc. I promised I would come back to the little box. Popa writes, you have the whole world in miniature. You can easily put it in a pocket, easily steal it, easily lose it. This is a warning and a celebration. It can be both and neither at once. Think what it means to have the world at your fingertips. Would you take that opportunity, even if it involved risk? Once taken, would you safeguard it with all your power? Your years of study at ASU, whether as an undergraduate in English or as a graduate student, 
have given you your own world in miniature, a little box of knowledge and experience and life to carry in your pocket and keep safe and whole. This world you've earned through your hard work and study is a tremendous privilege, but also a considerable responsibility. And with the ever shifting ground we find ourselves traversing these days, it behooves all of us to take our privileges and responsibilities seriously. For those of you who've spent the preceding years of your college and graduate or graduate career reading texts or watching films or studying language or teaching, remember that no matter where you end up, working through deciphering and explicating meaning will always be relevant and necessary to the preservation of culture and humanity. For those of you who write, the creation of meaning, the construction of story and character and narrative and beauty is one of the primary ways we form communities and strive to change institutions that have not always had everyone's best interests at heart. We are all, all of us, storytellers and readers. As graduates of ASU English, you have hopefully learned and will continue to practice ways to wield those powers of creation and interpretation conscientiously with both passion and care. And with that, I want to extend again to each of you a heartfelt congratulations. I wish you all the power to see yourselves in the world and for the world to see itself in you. And remember, take care of the little box. Thank you so much, Aviva. That was beautiful. And it's certainly an anthology series that I'd long to see the second season of, especially as I know that like the future itself, it's going to be co-written by everyone in this Zoom room, and it's definitely going to be exciting. Thank you. So our awards. The uh, first award is the Uleda Rodriguez Memorial Award in Creative Writing. This award, created by Sean Coughlin in honor of Uleda Rodriguez, who died of breast cancer in 2012, provides financial support for ASU graduate students who want to pursue a career in creative writing. One annual award of $1,000 is given to a selected MFA in creative writing student, alternating between fiction and poetry. This year's award was in fiction. The fall 20 winner is Steffi Sin. Steffi is a Chinese American writer from San Francisco who is currently working on her MFA at ASU. Her work has been published in the Kenyan Review, and she is nonfiction editor of Hayden's Ferry Review. She won the Rodriguez Award for her story, Dungeness. One of the award judges wrote about this story, I savor the story's crisp sensory details and the microscopic attention to the preparation of food. This author uses the act of cooking to deftly reveal family tensions and generational history. Congratulations. Next is the ASU Department of English Outstanding Graduate Teaching Assistant Awards. These awards of $1,000 each recognize the teaching achievements of doctoral students in the Department of English. Students are evaluated on the basis of teaching excellence as observed by both writing programs and research area faculty members. Two spring 2021 awardees are Kristen Bennett and Michelle Glarum. Kristen's a fifth year PhD student in the Writing, Rhetorics, and Literacies program and was president of the Graduate Scholars of English Association in 2019 to 2020. She taught many types of undergraduate courses, including one for the undergraduate major in Writing, Rhetoric, and Literacies. She also taught ENG 301, 215, 216, 102, 101, and assisted the ENG 594 TA seminar. She has worked with a diverse body of students and Professor Maureen Goggin says that Kristen's a hard worker and her performance both as a teacher and a scholar shines consistently. Congratulations, Kristen. Michelle is in the fifth year of the PhD program in English education. She's taught composition classes 
and undergraduate English education classes. And according to the Director of English Education, Jessica Early, Michelle is an exceptional instructor and scholar and is poised to become a leader in the field, in the field of English education. Congratulations, Michelle. Next is the Carl C. Carley Linguistics Fellowship. This graduate fellowship of $680 was created by Joan Barry, an M. Tiesel program alum, and her husband, Charles Barry, in honor of Joan's grandfather, Carl C. Carley. The fellowship is given to students in linguistics who take great pride in their efforts and exhibit intellectual curiosity. Students are selected based on linguistic interests and goals, overall achievement, and faculty recommendations. The 2020-2021 winner is Mary Bartlow. Mary is an MA student in the Linguistics and Applied Linguistics program. Her goal is to work as a field linguist, doing documentation of indigenous language and researching understudied languages. She plans to join the Peace Corps after she graduates in 2022. Congratulations, Mary. Next is the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Dean's Medal for English. Each department and school within the college has selected a phenomenal student who has demonstrated a steadfast commitment to academic excellence during their time at ASU. The Spring 2021 Medalist for English is Alexandra Rios. The Fall 20 Medalist for English is Cisco Stargazer. Though, Alexa began, sorry, though Alex began her career at ASU as a biology major, she's graduating this spring with a major in English literature and minors in both Italian and Spanish. A first-generation American who grew up in a bilingual home, she says that she quickly gravitated towards the study of languages, and her love for literature helped foster that. Alex plans to pursue an advanced degree in comparative literature, where she can further immerse herself in language, literature, and research. The passion, these passions can be seen in the jobs and internships she has held at ASU, including hosting a radio show, conducting literary research, working on a political campaign, and assisting in Hayden Library Special Collections. Alex has done all of this while earning an impressive 3.99 GPA. Congratulations, Alex. Cisco graduated last fall with a BA in Film and Media Studies and certificates in International Cinema and Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Studies. He was a Barrett Honors College student with a particular interest in queer, gender, and disability theories during his time at ASU. As a facilitator of media relations for the ASU Rainbow Coalition, he was able to connect lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer sun devils with resources and their communities. Congratulations, Cisco. Next is the Department of English Faculty Scholarship. This scholarship of $750 is funded by faculty in the Department of English and is given to an advanced undergraduate enrolled in any of its programs, whether on campus or online. It is awarded on the basis of need as well as grades and recommendations. The 2021 winner is William Strazala. William is an undergraduate English major in the Writing, Rhetorics and Literacies, Literacies program with a minor in communication. He has a 4.0, both within and outside his major, which is remarkable. According to the Scholarship Selection Committee, William is passionate about message creation and communicating effectively. He has a clear sense of his goals, which include working as a coordinator and communication specialist in a nonprofit and being able to assist his mother economically. His pragmatic approach to developing his communication skills is complemented by what Professor Kathleen Lamp describes as his playfulness with language and form. Congratulations, William. 
Next is the Don and Eileen Nilsson Humor Scholarship Award. Don and Eileen Nilsson, professors of English at ASU and co-founders of the International Society for Humor Studies, established this award in 2011. This award is given to the best humorous online presentation that teaches any aspect of language. In other words, the presentation should do more than just make an audience laugh. It should make an audience laugh while teaching them something about language. The annual award competition is open to undergraduate students enrolled in an English degree program, including the English education program in the Mary Lou Fulton Teachers College. The award amount is $2,500 split between two winners this year. The 2021-22 winners are Brianna Brandy and Jeff Griggs. Brianna is an undergraduate student majoring in secondary education, English, in the Mary Lou Fulton Teachers College. She looks forward to becoming a high school English teacher after graduation. According to the judges, her award-winning submission, Communicative Competency Hawaiian Style, is informative and engaging in equal me measures. In this short video, Brianna plays the part of three different characters at a Hawaiian barbecue. While after, sorry, after each scene, she speaks directly to the camera, explaining the sociolinguistic concept she has just illustrated. Brianna is so obviously having fun in this clever, well-produced video, it's impossible not to smile while watching it. Congratulations, Brianna. Jeff is an undergraduate film and media studies major who will be graduating summa cum laude this spring. A returning student, he says that my time at ASU has been invigorating and inspiring and receiving the Don and Eileen Nelson Humor Award is a huge motivation for me as I pursue my career as a comic screenwriter and director. People have always told me that I'm funny. Now I have a humor scholarship that proves it. About Jeff's winning submission, Idioms, the judges said, appearing in the small box at the corner of the screen, Jeff narrates a colorful slide presentation. The examples are varied and fun, but it is Jeff's clear and amiable narration that makes this presentation a real winner. Congratulations, Jeff. Next, the English International Graduate Student Book Scholarship. This book scholarship was created by Jai Young Park, who earned his BA in English in 1997 and his PhD in English in 2004 at ASU. He is currently an associate professor and chair of the Department of English Education in the College of Education at Chonbuk National University in Korea. The scholarship of $300 goes to an international graduate student in the Department of English to be used for books and is awarded based on need and faculty recommendation. The 2021-22 winner is Muhammad Irfan Zamzami. Muhammad is in his second year of the PhD program in literature. A first generation college student from Indonesia, he is conducting research on the technology of imperialism in literary works from Britain, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Australia on a Fulbright grant. Congratulations, Muhammad. The Friends of the Department of English Scholarship. Funded by many donations to English's Scholarship and Fellowship Fund, this $1,000 scholarship is for undergraduate English and film and media studies majors, including online students, in the college and is awarded based on academic merit and faculty recommendation. The fall 21 winner is Zane Encinas. Zane is a junior triple majoring in philosophy, sustainability, and English with a minor in sociology, and as if that weren't enough, certificates in environmental humanities and social science research methods at Barrett, the Honors College. He's been research assistant on seven different projects while at ASU, exploring topics such as substance abuse among detained youth, environmental public art, environmental attitudes and behaviors towards urban wildlife, 
the Green New Deal, Indigenous media rights management, and young Latinx and Native American adults' concepts of their American identity. Professor Ellie Long writes, as Zane crafts arguments with the intent to persuade and to engage, the very strength of his work lives within the depth of his emotional intelligence as he considers the complicated thoughts, feelings, and backstories of a diverse and complex range of subjects. Zane has not only demonstrated academic excellence in the true spirit of ASU, he has also used his learning to combat climate change and social inequality. Congratulations, Zane. Next is the George and Collis Portnoff Endowed Fellowship in Comparative Literature. This fund, with an award of $3,000, was established by former chair and professor of English, Nicholas Salerno, in honor of George and Collis Portnoff for their lifelong commitment to a vision of a world united by the international literary community. Collis was a professor in the ASU Department of English, where she served as chair from 1957 to 1964. Collis's husband, George Portnoff, had been a Russian officer who had served with Tsar Nicholas II's army. He was in Spain at the outset of the Bolshevik Revolution and could never return to his native Russia. He was a professor and chair in the Department of Foreign Languages at ASU, now the School of International Letters and Culture. George passed away in 1948 and Collis in 1993. The 2021-22 winner is Mohammed Irfan Zamzami. We met Mohammed earlier as the winner of the English International Graduate Student Book Scholarship so congratulations again, Mohammed. Next is the High Impact Internship Award. This is the third year of this award, which was initially funded by Sun Devil Giving Day donors in 2019. Two awards of $1,000 each are awarded to undergraduate and or graduate students in the Department of English who are completing unpaid internships with a high impact provider, an organization working towards the greater social good. The two winners for spring 2021 are Andrea Yang and Ansley Dickin. Andrea is an undergraduate student in English's Writing, Rhetorics, and Literacies program who worked as a film reviewer with Copa Short Films Festival in fall 20. The award judges noted that she used her internship work to discover, I'm uh, sorry, she used her internship work to discover that when it comes to telling stories, people who tell the stories matter. Drawing on her perspective as a person of color, she approached films and the art of filmmaking with a goal of promoting diverse stories to broader audiences and with the hope of providing supportive spaces for artists to tell their stories and the stories they believe matter through the making of good films. She reflects what the Department of English hopes for its high impact interns, an awakening to the human experience and the importance of storytelling that changes what comes from it. Congratulations, Andrea. Ainsley is an online undergraduate student in English who is graduating this spring. She completed an editorial internship with Portland Monthly in fall 20. The award judges wrote, she leveraged her internship to work to respond to the social injustice, political unrest, and economic suffering in her hometown. From giving a voice to the struggling hotel staff, restaurant owners, and independent businesses, to connecting with community therapists, to ask them, how are you doing? Ainsley brought light and hope through her writing. In addition, she put words into action by helping host Portland's Monthly's annual Light a Fire Awards, which gives recognition to the city's leading volunteers, nonprofits, and general philanthropists. She also embodies 
what the Department of English hopes for its high impact interns, someone who uses their talent to keep the heartbeat of their local community going during a pandemic. Congratulations, Ainsley. Next, the Homecoming Writing Contest. The Homecoming Writing Contest celebrates the creative and scholarly writing of undergraduate students in the Department of English. English and Film and Media Studies majors or minors, including ASU Online students. Awards of $500 are given to the first place winners in the categories of poetry, short story, or creative nonfiction and scholarly essay. An awards presentation and reading event coincide with ASU's homecoming week. Last fall, we held a virtual event featuring the award winners. The fall 21 winners are Zane Encinas, Brianna Hoffman, Sally Kruger-Wyman. We met Zane earlier today as the winner of this year's Friends of English Scholarship. He received the Scholarly Essay Homecoming Award for his piece on the Ficaldian Carceral State and Antholdua's Borderlands. Congratulations, Zane. Brianna is an undergraduate in English's creative writing program. She received the Poetry Award for her untitled collection of four poems. Congratulations, Brianna. Sally is a student in English's online undergraduate program. She received the Fiction Creative Writing Nonfiction Award for her essay again and again. Next is the Jewel, Jules J. Anatoly Creative Writing Scholarship. This $1,000 scholarship for fiction writing was established by Roland and Phyllis Anatole in honor of Roland's father, Jules J. Anatole. Jules Anatole was a lifelong bibliophile who legally changed his name from Jules Joseph Antikovsky because of his admiration for the French novelist Anatole France. The scholarship supports undergraduate students involved in creative writing in the Department of English. The Fall 21 winner is Cam Camry Romney. Camry is an undergraduate with a double major in Japanese and English creative writing. The judges wrote of her winning story, richly detailed and voiced, written in prose and in fragment, Hosanna tells of multiple generations of women battling with faith, faith place, and inheritance. This is a deeply moving story that expands what a short story can contain. Not only is its reach more ambitious than most, its world is most convincingly and urgently built. Congratulations, Cameron. Next, the Katherine Turner Dissertation Fellowship. This fellowship was funded by Katherine Turner who taught American literature and creative writing in the ASU Department of English from 1946 until the mid 1970s. The fellowship, which is an award of approximately $13,000 was established in the 1994-1995 year and enables doctoral candidates in the Department of English working in the field of American literature to finish writing their dissertations. The 2021-2022 winner is Clarissa Goldsmith. Clarissa entered the PhD program in 2016 on a graduate college interdisciplinary enrichment fellowship and will be finishing her final year with the assistance of the Turner Fellowship. Her dissertation is titled Horror on the Border, Exploring Aesthetics of Resistance in Chicanx Literature, Film, and Life which concerns the resistance possibilities of the horror genre, and in particular, Latinx and Chicanx horror. Congratulations, Clarissa. Next is the Mabel A. Lyon Poetry Award. Poetry Mabel A. Lyon published more than a thousand poems 
in commercial and literary magazines and anthologies. She founded the first public library in Goodyear, Arizona, and co-founded the American Poetry Society, serving as its first president. After she died, friends and family of Lyon made a memorial gift to establish the Mabel A. Lyon Poetry Award at ASU in honor of her loved poetry. Lyon's poems and writing were provided to the English department as an archive for faculty and students. The Mabel A. Lyon Poetry Award gives a monetary prize of $300 and a public reading with the Lyon Award judge to an ASU undergraduate or graduate creative writing student each year for a single poem of any length. The fall 20 winner is Julian De La Cruz. Julian is an MFA student who is co-host of Equality Arizona's Queer Poetry Salon. He is working on a poetry collection that examines the interstices of empire and desire. Of De La Cruz's poem, I, Judge Joshua Jennifer Espinoza wrote, this poem breaks language beautifully and avoids leaving the reader with any easy answers. Instead, asking us to consider the ways in which the words we use form the reality around us. Congratulations, Julian. Next is the Marvin Fisher Book Award. This award was established by English chair Wendy Wilkins in the 1990s to honor Marvin Fisher, a former professor and chair of English at ASU. Professor Fisher passed away in 2020 at the age of 92. The award of $250 is given biannually to an international student enrolled in a graduate program in the Department of English to purchase books. Awards are based on merit, academic need, and faculty recommendation. The spring 2021 winner is Layla Galami. The fall 21 winner is Muhammad Idrisu. Layla is a third year PhD student in the Linguistics and Applied Linguistics program. She is from Iran and her research area is Instructed Second Foreign Language Acquisition. She has published papers in and serves as a reviewer and board member for various professional journals. She also served as communications officer for the Call Club at ASU. She is a translator for an editing, I'm sorry, she is a translator for an editing and translation center in Iran. Muhammad is a second year PhD student in writing, rhetorics, and literacies. His research pertains to theorizing and attending to public rhetorics about Muslims and Islam in the public sphere in the US and around the world. He has presented aspects of his research at various conferences in the last two years. Congratulations, Muhammad. The Marvin K. Fisher Scholarship. The Marvin K. Fisher Scholarship was established in 2020 by Michael and Deborah Elliott, longtime philanthropic supporters of ASU, in honor of Professor Emeritus Marvin Fisher. Michael considers himself fortunate to have had Professor Fisher as an educator, mentor, and friend during his graduate studies. The scholarship recognizes demonstrated and potential excellence in graduate students' research and or creative work and their impact as a teacher in the college classroom. The recipient receives a cash award of $10,000 and is known as the Department of English Marvin Fisher Scholar for that year. The 2020-21 winner selected last fall is Scott Caddy. The 2021-22 winner is Rachel Rear. Scott is graduating this spring with his PhD in English Literature. He has held several student leadership positions in the department, including for the long 19th century colloquium and the ASU book traces. And this year was president 
of the Graduate Scholars of English Association. Scott defended his dissertation, The Significance of Literary Outliers in 19th Century British Fiction, a Stylometric Analysis, on April 12th. Congratulations, Scott. Rachel is a fiction writer in her second year of the MFA in Creative Writing Program. Currently a poetry editor for Hayden's Ferry Review, she is working on a short story collection and a novel, both of which examine the lives of girls and women seeking liberation from the social constructs of religion, domesticity, and beauty. Congratulations, Rachel. The Nick Ivan's Memorial Literature Scholarship. Created in 2004-2005, this scholarship was established in memory of Nick Ivan's BA English Literature 2014. Nick's family, parents Ed and Jackie and sister Haley, created this legacy of an endowed scholarship to support deserving students who love literature and who, like Nick himself, especially love the modernist work of James Joyce. The scholarship is awarded to either a graduate or undergraduate student in the Department of English for an essay discussing any work by a modernist writer and indicating how that work has influenced English literature and or literary theory. The fall 2021 winner is Thomas Bate. Tom is an English literature undergraduate and a member of Barrett, the Honors College. He also works for university academic success programs as a writing mentor. Of his submission, the selection committee wrote that, in this thoughtful essay, Tom walks readers through Vladimir Nabokov's appreciation of James Joyce's Ulysses. A true lover of language, Tom writes, does not get a sense when reading Ulysses of being intellectually bludgeoned by its words, but instead swims around in these words alongside Joyce, both reader and author as curious as each other. Tom's essay is itself a pleasure for the lover of language and his sophisticated engagement with a range of 20th century thinkers is impressive. Congratulations, Tom. Next is the Outstanding Paper on Second Language Writing Award, established and funded by Professor of English, Paul K. Matsuda, who directs Second Language Writing at ASU. This annual award of $200 recognizes outstanding intellectual work by ASU graduate students on issues related to second language writing and writers. The paper can be philosophical, historical, or empirical, or a critical review essay. The spring 2021 winner is Xiao Tan. Xiao Tan is in the third year of the PhD program in writing, rhetorics, and literacies. Her winning paper titled Interrogate, sorry, Integrating Multimodality into First Year Composition, Exploring Issues in LL2 Writing Teachers Agency, focuses on multimodal pedagogy in the L2 writing context. Congratulations, Xiao. Next is the Wilford A. Farrell Memorial Fellowship. This award of $500 is made possible by an endowment from Wilfred Bill Farrell, a former director of graduate studies and English department chair who had a very strong interest in strengthening the English graduate program at ASU. Recipients must be graduate students who demonstrate excellence in teaching, research, and service. The 2021-22 winner is Kelly Bauer, Kelly is a second year PhD student in the Linguistics and Applied Linguistics program. Before she came to ASU, she conducted research in Chile on environmental justice as it relates to several Mapuche communities. She is also an independent documentary filmmaker. Foundation professor Neil A. Lester, for whom Kelly is a research assistant says, I'm fully aware of and impressed by her steadfast commitment 
to promoting, preserving, and documenting the best that is our individual and communal humanity via the specific lens of language preservation. Kelly has participated in panels and student community building across campus in support of marginalized populations. Congratulations, Kelly. Next is the Glendon and Catherine Swathert Awards. The Swathout Awards in Writing, established in 1962 by celebrated authors Glendon and Catherine Swathout, is financially one of the top five creative writing prizes in America for students from undergraduate and graduate writing programs. This awards series has provided hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years to support emerging creative writers at ASU. The Swarthout family recently generously amended the gift, which enables additional prizes and amounts going forward. In 2021, first prizes were $2,500 each. Second prizes were $2,000. Third prizes were $1,500 and honorable mentions were $500. The judges in 2021 were Dana Johnson for fiction and Aria Arbor, Arbor, excuse me, for poetry. The 2021 winners are for undergraduate poetry. First place, Autumn Cooper, an English creative writing major. Second place, Carolina Quintero, a double major in English creative writing and justice studies. Third place, Genevieve Witter, an English creative writing major. Honorable mention goes to Natasha Webb Villegas, a double major in English creative writing and dance. The 2021 winners for undergraduate fiction. First place, Christopher Clements, an English creative writing major. Second place, Camry Romney, a double major in English, creative writing, and Japanese. Third place, Brianna Scott West, an online English major. An honorable mention to Ruth Beadle, an English literature major. The 2021 winners, graduate poetry. First place, Maritza Estrada, an MFA creative writing student. Second place, Anna Flores, an MFA creative writing student. Third place, Shu Li, an MFA creative writing student. Honorable mention goes to Jade Cho, an MFA creative writing student. The 2021 winners for graduate fiction. First place, Jules Hogan, an MFA creative writing student. Second place, Steffi Sin, an MFA creative writing student. Third place, James Bennett, an MFA creative writing student. Honorable mention goes to Christy Louie, an MFA creative writing student. Congratulations to all our Swath Out winners. And with that, the formal part of the ceremony is at an end. At this point, uh, I'd like to once again congratulate all of our winners and all of our graduates. And anyone who wants to stay, I'll leave the uh, Zoom room open. And if any of our graduates want to share with us where they're going from here, they can uh, raise you, well, you, I'll address to you. You can raise your hand and we'll uh, unmute you and you can share. Congratulations and thanks again. Oh, it looks like uh, Don Nielsen wants to share. I'm in. <laughs> I just wanted to ask Brianna Brandy and Jeff uh, Griggs a little bit more about their research. Are Brianna and Jeff here? Are they, oh, are they here? Are they, on, are they online here? If they're not here, see, sometimes some people have uh, come in and out. I know it's a busy day, so I okay. don't know who's here at the moment. Understood. Thank you. 
Great job. And thank you for endowing the award. I know it's greatly appreciated. It's so wonderful to see different snippets of people in their regalia with family. I mean, obviously there's something special about being together in person, but there's something strangely intimate about the Zoom space where you can actually see family around you celebrating and the close up on the face. I, it's, it's really special for me, I have to say. I noticed there are uh, comments in chat. Much celebration, much congratulations. If anyone does want to share um, via camera where they're going from here, it's open. If not, I'll let you move on to your next celebration. In that case, one more time, a round of applause for everyone. Thank you.